guys, welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we're in the new 2020 Nissan Kicks per your request. And of course, I also wanted to check this one out because I've actually not reviewed the Kicks yet. So this one is going to be a new one for me as well. And of course, I will be testing out absolutely everything about this one, going over everything about the Kicks. So what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so there are a few different trim levels available for the 2020 Nissan Kicks. First one being the S, starting at $18,870, SV for $20,500, and lastly the one we have today being the SR, starting at $21,120. And so regardless of trim level that you go with, actually, power plant is going to be the same. Powering this little beast is going to be a 1.6 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder, putting out 122 horsepower at 6,300 RPM. 114 pound-feet of torque available at 4,000 rpm power sent to the front wheels through a CVT giving you a 0 to 60 time coming in at approximately 9.7 seconds which doesn't sound like a whole lot of paper so we will be testing that out in a little bit here of course and MPG numbers come in at 31 in the city 36 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel and so before we do that acceleration test, one of the quirky little things about the Nissan Kicks here, there actually is a sport mode. However, you might not ever know that because the sport mode is a singular line tucked away on the back side of the shifter. So when you're driving, you can't even see it quite honestly, but if you press that, it does immediately downshift, so to speak. We're in a CVT, but it is gonna hold the RPMs in a much higher level, giving you more power on demand. The only way you're gonna know that it is indeed in sport mode is there is going to be a small little s located next to the d for drive of course found on the digital display portion on the gauges here so that's how you're going to know you're in sport mode of course you just press it again to take it out of sport mode but i found that kind of interesting they don't actually have a button labeled sport to put it in that sport mode it's just a singular horizontal line found underneath the shifter so you can't even see it so that's how you're going to use it if you wanted it but having said that what do you guys say let's go ahead and do a quick little acceleration test now let's see how quickly we can get this new 2020 Nissan kicks up to speed. All right, there it is. Here's our straightaway. In three, two, one, coming to a complete stop and go. It sounds loud. <laughs> All right, okay, that's enough. Definitely not the quickest thing in the world. If you guys want quicker, just get the 370Z, quite honestly. But it'll do the trick. It should do the trick of marching onto the highway, stuff like that. But yeah, it's not the quickest thing. But again, this is more of a city car anyway. So do you really need absolute crazy acceleration in this? I think not. Let's get off the acceleration then. To go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so as we pull up to a stop sign, actually, up front, you're going to find 10.2 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, eight inch solid rear disc. As far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, this is actually where the kicks is pretty darn impressive. 115 feet. Let me tell you guys, usually when I drive vehicles like the kicks, you usually expect somewhere in the 120s or even 130s so 115 feet is actually very very impressive and i can tell you guys i've already hit the brakes in the kicks it is very impressive there's no brake pedal delay or anything like that it's not a soft braking feel it's definitely a nice braking feel as well it's not too soft it's definitely not too firm either i will say that but very nice braking feel you can definitely tell it brings you to a stop pretty darn quick it feels like 115 feet from 60 so that is actually well done on the kick so we'll say that and actually since i have the numbers of course comparison wise the toyota chr comes in at 122 feet ford Echo Sport comes in at 128 feet. So again, 115 feet works. But so then touching on suspension and handling, up front you're gonna get an independent strut type front suspension. In the back, torsion beam rear suspension, also a front stabilizer bar. As far as ride quality goes, I will say you can feel a good bit of the road in the kicks. But again, that's kind of to be expected in a vehicle like this. So we'll say it's not the smoothest ride in the world, but again, pretty much as expected there. Steering feel, I will say, is definitely on the looser side. Not a horrible thing. Again, it's pretty much as expected. It is not like this is a race car. You don't need a heavier steering feel, but it is definitely on the looser side with this one. Cabin noise, again, pretty much on par for the chorus. Usually when it comes to vehicles like the CHR, the Ford Echo Sport, you are going to feel a little bit more of the road. You are going to get a little bit of cabin noise. So it all pretty much is as I expected the Nissan Kicks to be, I will say that. But so then touching on visibility, I can see pretty good out the back. And I put it that way because those second row headrests are feel like gigantic. So they definitely eat up a good bit of that rear visibility. But this is kind of a smaller vehicle. So really, 
you shouldn't have too many issues and kind of just look past the headrest there where you can actually just completely remove them if you didn't have rear passengers I guess or fold the seats down one or the other but they definitely do eat up a good bit of that rear visibility I did want to say that but that about rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this brand new 2020 Nissan Kicks all right so here she is you guys the 2020 Nissan Kicks finished with a two-tone exterior so let me go ahead and start with that as far as that two-tone exterior goes that basically puts the roof a different color those two-tone color options range from $250 to $595 in case you were interested in one of them you guys can see we got the black roof and the red exterior here today but now let's go ahead and start up front on this one of course looking at that front grille you will find that nissan v motion front grille it is going to be finished in a chrome if you go with the s or sv trim levels and you will get a dark chrome finish if you were to go with the sr trim level that we have here today then make your way to the sides halogen headlights come with the s and sv trim levels however you will get led headlights with led signature lighting for the sr trim level and that is of course what you are looking at right now and just to elaborate on those headlights i know i don't have them on right here in this shot but you guys can see this headlight design is kind of crazy looking i kind of like it look at the angles on those headlights and look how far off and kind of up they come off the hood right there i think this angle probably shows it the best but it's a very unique headlight design i kind of like it but anyways automatic feature also comes with those headlights meaning they do turn on automatically for you when it starts to get dark out that's always handy and fog lights come with the sr trim level down below so you guys can see them as well there but so they make your way to the side of the kicks roof rails come standard with the sv trim level and up and actually that's one of the changes for the 2020 kicks is roof rails actually used to be standard on the s trim level as well in 2019 but they are now just standard on the sv and sr trim levels for 2020 so i did want to point that out floating roof line you guys can find that towards the back of the kicks there body colored door handles come with the sv and sr trim levels body colored power adjustable side mirrors do come standard they will be heated for the sv and sr trim levels and you will get integrated turn signals if you were to go with the sr trim like we have today then take a look down at the wheel setup 16 inch steel wheels with covers are going to come with the s trim level 17 inch aluminum alloy wheels with the sv and sr and so but now making our way to the back of this one rear roof spoiler is going to come with the sr trim level only so therefore that is what you were looking at right now integrated brake light can be found just below that it's not going to be part of the rear spoiler but it is there of course just below that rear window wiper trim level badging at the bottom right hand portion of that rear tailgate there and of course just below it all a single exhaust outlet we have a nice chrome finish to it of course right here as well so do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip So but now since we are around back when it comes to opening that rear hatch it is a manual lift gate so simply just lift up or actually there's a rubber button on the back of that rear hatch you just press that it unlocks and then you can open it up but once opened up cargo capacity comes in at 25.3 cubic feet if that was not enough space those rear seats do fold down bumping that up to 32.3 cubic feet also in that cargo area for all trim levels you will find four cargo tie down hooks there's also a cargo cover for the sv and sr trim levels and there are some grocery hooks back there as well it's up and then make your way to the rear leg room that comes in at 33.2 inches so for reference i've been even six feet tall this is how much space i have back there and there are some rear under seat heater ducts for the sv and sr trim levels so there's no actual air vents found on the back side of the center armrest here in the front but they are located underneath the seat so i did want to mention that but make our way now to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seats come standard across the board you will find some orange stitching if you were to go with the sr trim level only i think you guys can clearly see that heated seats are going to be optional for the sr we actually do happen to have them today they're located just in between the climate control information up front there so so you can get them if you want but ultimately the seats were plenty comfortable for me so no issues with seat comfort or anything like that i will say that but take a look now at the steering wheel it is tilt and 
and telescoping for all trim levels. It is leather wrapped for the SR trim level. Actually a flat bottom for the SR as well. I absolutely love that. And again, tied all together with that orange stitching, at least when you go with the SR trim level. So it looks pretty darn cool for that reason, I guess. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have all of your buttons located on one side of the key, Nissan logo at the top, lock, unlock, and that remote start is going to come with the SV and SR trim levels. Push button start is going to come with the SV and SR trim levels as well, actually. So all I am going to do, therefore, simply just put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just in front of the shifter there. And so, but then once started up, it's kind of a half digital display. The speedometer is going to be on your right. The digital display portion is going to be on your left. And of course, it is completely customizable by using the steering wheel mounted controls located on the left side of the steering wheel. You can display different things like a digital speedometer if you wanted to do that. There's also your tire pressure information. There's how many miles you have left until you hit empty. You could choose to have a more traditional setup on that side, displaying your RPMs if you wanted to. I'd actually probably leave it on that. That's pretty cool. And it tells you your average miles per gallon and really a bunch of other different stuff as well. So a good bit of stuff actually located within that gauge setup because of the digital display. But make our way now to overall interior quality. Automatic climate control comes with the SV and SR, meaning you could set a temperature and it will automatically reach that for you. Love the orange stitching, as I previously said. You can actually find it just above the passenger side glove box and around the infotainment screen as well. And we'll get to the infotainment screen in a second here. Like the piano black finishes around the circular air vents on both the driver and passenger side there as well. And that piano black finish is also around the shifter there. Good bit of storage in front of the shifter, 12 volt power outlet, auxiliary port, USB charging port. You have a couple cup holders behind that and a small little button to open up that center armrest here in the front. It's a very small little button, so I thought that was pretty cool. Bunch of places where you can store some coins, like quarters it looks like perhaps, and a little bit of storage in there. Not a whole lot, but at least it's there, so I do like that as well. But now, like I said, let's go ahead and make our way to that tech display. Seven inch color touchscreen display does come standard across the board. Blue Bluetooth and audio streaming comes with that. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay for the SV and SR trim levels. And of course, you can check out your radio information up there as well. And by the way, when it comes to the sound system in the kicks, a couple different sound systems actually. You do have your standard sound system, which is six speakers. That actually comes for all trim levels across the board. However, there is an optional sound system specifically for the SR that we have today that we do have here today. And that is going to be the eight speaker Bose sound system with a speaker located in the driver's side headrest. I found that pretty darn cool. It was the first thing I noticed when I got in this one. So since it's there, I think you guys know what we have to do next. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. Actually, that was really good. It kind of surprised me for the size of the kicks. Actually, that was plenty, really more than enough for the size of the kicks, plenty of bass, Clarity is actually what really surprised me. The clarity on that Bose sound system was pretty darn good. But again, I've had Bose sound systems in my cars before and they always have never failed me. So that was definitely a really good sound system for the kicks. I will say that. But so the last thing I wanted to mention to you on the tech display, at least, is when you do put the kicks in reverse, you will find a rear view camera across the board. And actually for the SR trim level, you will get a 360 degree monitor as well. So therefore that is what you are looking at right now. Love to see that in a vehicle priced as the kicks is. That is so freaking cool. Usually you find that a luxury vehicle. So that's why I say that. But as always, that is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, front side, side curtain airbags, of course, come standard driver and passenger knee airbags, though, as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, a.k.a. lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks as well, tire pressure monitoring system. But safety is probably where the most changes happened for the 2020 kick. So new for 2020, advanced safety is now going to be standard for all trim levels, including the S, including a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection, lane departure warning, rear automatic braking, high beam assist, and rear parking sensors as well across the board. Now, I will say that rear automatic braking works wonderful. I actually had the plate covering up one of the parking sensors in the back, so when I first tried to put the kicks in reverse, it did automatically brake for me because the license plate was actually covering one of the sensors, so it definitely works plenty well. I will say that. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts, first thing I got to mention, I love the standard advanced safety 
safety features that are new for 2020. Gotta love that. It's not an IIHS top safety pick due to its headlights essentially, but still all the rest of it kind of make up for it really. But also braking is great on the kicks. Really one of the best braking feels and best braking statistics really in its class. Although in the downside acceleration isn't the quickest, probably one of the slowest on that side of things, but still the braking makes up for it. Love that the Bose sound system is available. It's a heck of a sound system for the kicks. No all wheel drive available. That kind of bumps me out. I would have liked to have seen that as an option on the kicks. Some of its competitors offer it. So that would have been kind of nice. Ultimately, it's kind of hit and miss for me. So I wouldn't have minded some of those extra things. But overall, because of the braking, because of the safety, because of the sound system, this one is definitely one you guys got to check out. But let me know what you guys think in the comments section of the 2020 kicks. That is about it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there. If you like, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button. If you're into new car reviews, that is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.